Uh, hello everybody. Um, it is a short video, continuously to um, the bigger bone uh, I saw in SPI, but in Raspberry Pi 3 it's uh, a little, it's much more simpler. Um, using the build root, of course, the environment. Um, I want to create an image that uh, has an ISOC1 uh, and talking with a, a microcontroller uh, Kinetis KW40Z. And um, uh, the Raspberry Pi, of course, is, will be the master and the microcontroller 40Z will be the slave. Um, the steps um, to create uh, an ISOC device, because it's not uh, enabled by default, are simple. Um, of course, we are taking our uh, build root uh, dev config. We add the ISOC tools. Uh, why not? We, we, we should add it. And this is the pin mux of uh, the, the pin layout of uh, the Raspberry Pi. We can see that um, ASCII C1 is the NSCL are alternated, which means there are no default uh, in the pin muxing. Um, pin 3 and pin 5, GPIO 2 and 3. Um, it's alternate with the SDA and SCL. So in order to activate them, we need to uh, do some kind of pin muxing. But the pin muxing in Raspberry Pi, it's uh, it's not actually going to the um, uh, device tree overlay and device tree and changing. It's a rather more higher uh, approach. So we need to... Uh, first of all, let's let's see. We need to go to the make Linux menu config and make sure that we have the Broadcom uh, BCM 2835 as we can controller. And um, this is what we need. This is the most in, more important. Um, also, we need the ISOC device interface. Uh, check the model with the ISOC support. Um, Make sure it. Uh, after we build the image, um, we of course need to do mode probe as we see dev and as we see BCM2835. But just a moment before we do the mode probe, we need to change the config uh, txt in the output config RPR firmware config.txt. So to do it, first of all, compile the image. Um, then uh, edit this file. You need to add dt params equal ISOC underscore arm uh, equal on. This is the only line which we need to add in order to activate the device tree. And after we did this mode probe, by the way, not mode probe BCM 2708. This is for probably the Raspberry Pi 2. For the Raspberry Pi 3, we need. Uh, this device driver and also what we need is to the dev management in build root to be dynamic using uh, mdev okay because it's not uh, enabled by default in build root always add a uh, dropper to do ssh because it's easy although we have the hdmi uh, and then we should have in Raspberry Pi 3 the ISCO C1 uh, ready to connect uh, without any pull up because it's already a pull up inside uh, the chip. And we can do ISO C detect minus R1, one is the ISO C1 bus number. And we should see that um, we have a reply, it's 1F, this is the uh, slave address from uh, the KW40Z. So again, the steps are as for C tools, enable the VCM uh, uh, 2835, add the uh, DT params in uh, config DST, do the mopo because build root doesn't add it uh, automatically to any script or anywhere, you can make it in the in the profile or just create uh, your own script in init.d and uh, make a script there. Follow the S40 and uh, 40 network script and do the same. 
once the both loaded you could do ls mode and you should see the, those driver loaded and once you have it if you connect properly pins in the kw40z or any slave to the uh, pin 3 and pin 5 uh, don't forget to share a ground between them don't need a pull up and you should have um, associate detect and you can start uh, writing your own code so the bigger bone um, video and the Raspberry Pi video are introduction how to configure both boards for IceCore-C in order to the um, to upcoming um, video of the um, configure the 40Z and then the echo between them and write a C program on the Raspberry Pi. The same, by the way, is the same C program that runs on the Raspberry Pi. And the uh, bigger bone, even the same bi binary image is the same arm. On, and what are the changes I did and how to configure the 40Z in order to create a, a communication between them and create a functioning a program. So hopefully that it will help you get started. And see you next time. Bye bye.